So Friday, um, test day on the bike. So we're going to be doing lactate testing at home. Um, just really working out the baseline uh, values at this point in time. Uh, a week now since the last competition, so so it's a good 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 uh, point, I guess, in time to to make an assessment on on these things. I'm going to be doing lactate testing on the bike today, and then a metabolic test on the run in GreenFit tomorrow morning. Uh, woke up this morning with a pretty good heart rate variability, so you know, uh, hoping for some good results today. Uh, but obviously, time will tell about that. So uh, yeah, just uh, finishing feeding little, little one. Helena's uh, out for the moment, but she'll be back in a moment. And uh, yeah, because I, I want her help with the measurements, I prefer to take it, take the lactate, you know, through the earlobe instead of the fingertip. Uh, just my preference, really. But um, yeah, um, it will be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, I'll be using Swift for the measurements. So uh, starting at 150 watts in the first stage and, and then hopefully working my ways up towards, you know, maybe about 400, 420 watts in the last stage. Every stage will be five minutes. So taking a measurement on, on each five minute interval. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll see how it goes. I always like to measure uh, my weight as well, because of course we need that assessment um, before uh, the test commences. So let's see what the damage is, I guess. Right, 75.5. That's the magic number of the day. So what we're going to be mainly looking at today is my heart rate uh, with regards to the lactate levels. Uh, we're not going to be too much uh, looking at the watts because uh, most of my riding this time of the year is done outside um, and the watts inside are vastly different than what you get outside. But the heart rate is always like a more of a constant. So um, then we're going to be using those results we get indoors. Uh, with regards to the heart rate to, to correlate with what kind of a wattage that's going to be giving me outdoors. So that's a really important point here that we're not going to be using the watts we get from this test here uh, to you know navigate my training outside but instead we're going to be using the heart rate and then deciding the wattage outside based on that. Three and a half minutes afterwards. We'll see what that brings. I was up to 14.4, uh, one minute, 20 seconds afterwards, or, or about one and a half minutes. So let's see what this brings. On the way down again, yes. So now we can go to cool down. So now with a test done, it's just a matter of spinning down, getting the lactate out, um, Pretty successful test, if I would say so. You can see the measurements on the left-hand side there. Um, starting out pretty consistent at the lower wattage, and then, um, you know, being pretty consistent and going upwards. I'm a little bit higher than what I've normally been when I'm in top shape. So as, it, as we progress into the summer, I would expect the, the absolute top values at, you know, close to 400 watts to be you know, closer to about 10, maybe 9, 9.5, 10. But yeah, this is just uh, our baseline at this point and, and now uh, the fun part, the analysis.
So for the analysis of my lactate measurements, I use a program that is called Organizer. Uh, it's a really useful uh, program to set up these measurements and, and make a really, really accurate uh, predictions based on your lactate. Um, you know, as you can see, the, um, the, the line itself is pretty consistently uh, clean. Uh, it's always nice to see these measurements going pretty, pretty consistently like this. And, um, you know, there are a lot of things you can, you can analyze from this. Uh, many people ask me, you know, okay, so what's your FTP? Even though that's not really a number I use anymore because it's, it's just a little bit redundant for me personally. I don't use the FTP as a, as a metric. I, I rather want to go by the heart rate and, and my metabolic profile. But if you want to use something that would be, you know, the one hour estimate of this lactate profile, which in this case would be around 320 watts, uh, corresponding to maybe about 350 watts outside. Um, this is smack down the 145 heart rate that I've been usually doing when I do my interval sessions at threshold. So, uh, you know, I can relate a little bit to this as my um, kind of like my, my lactate threshold if you want to go by the one hour power. However, you also have these, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute, and, and even um, what they would call like the maximum lactate steady state, which would be about 275, 280 watts, uh, you know, on this profile. So now it's always going to be a question of how we're going to use this data to power uh, our training for the next months. The goal race this summer is going to be uh, of course, the Ironman Barcelona in, in October, but uh, we're going to be having a few races up until then. Uh, next one is in just over two weeks. That's a half Olympic race, so, you know, only taking about 50 minutes, 55 minutes total. Um, but, um, you know, the B race this summer is going to be uh, at the end of June, and that's uh, an Olympic distance triathlon with a 45 kilometer bike. So uh, most of the training, uh, interval based is going to be circling around uh, this sub uh, one hour intensity effort. So, you know, maintaining the heart rate around 140, 145 beats per minute. Uh, and this is to further uh, increase our efficiency at this race intensity. Um, <clears throat> this is probably going to be like the 20% of the time that I do any kind of work on the bike. Um, the rest of the time, I want to maintain the intensity where my lactate is still pretty uh, stable. So this is where we can see the LT1 on the graph, or the LT, if you will. Um, this is an indication that my muscle groups that I'm mainly using when I'm cycling, you know, the glutes, the uh, calves, um, <clears throat> quads, uh, these, these muscles are still efficient enough that they can utilize uh, you know, all the oxygen that they're getting and they haven't reached their full capacity yet. Um, when we see the lactate starting to rise a little bit, it's a little bit of an indication that these muscles that you're using on the bike uh, have reached their limit oxygen-wise and they need to get some extra help from, you know, other tissues in the body. And you're essentially putting extra load on the system as a whole. Um, at the same time, you're still just, you know, uh, training these muscles as you can aerobically. So <clears throat> it's 80% uh, of the time I'm going to be spending uh, my time below, you know, 125, 130 heart rate. This is about where I see my lactate going above 1.5, you know, 1.7 millimole per liter. Um, and so 80% of the time I'm going to just going to be there. This is really easy intensity. You can maintain easy conversations. Breathing is just normal. Uh, but as soon as you can start to feel, you know, this breathing starts to get a little bit more uh, intense, then you have reached this point. So uh, most of the training is going to be there. And then we're going to be focusing uh, the interval work towards this intensity that I'm going to be focusing on for this Olympic race uh, at the end of June. Following that, we're going to do another assessment, another measurement, and uh, then we're going to determine how we're going to build up towards the main race, which is going to be this Ironman in Barcelona, where we plan on going uh, beyond the 500 minute mark. So the bike needs to be uh, well dialed in for that, uh, 
of that time. Uh, but that's later. So now uh, I'm going to be putting up the, the training program based on this. And uh, then it's going to be fun to see how this is going to affect my levels in the future.